About a year ago, I became aware that Kodak used to make a 1600-ish, we'll get to that later, ISO version of Ektachrome. And after downing a few drinks, I picked up a few rolls from the world's largest overpriced kip. So now that I have it in hand, it's time to head out at sunset with the F3 and the 50 1 2. When it comes to shooting expired film, there is a rough rule you can follow where you overexpose one stop for every decade. But when it comes to shooting slide film, which this is, that's just not an option. If you overexpose the slide film by two stops, you're going to end up with blown out highlights and it's going to be just a big fat mess. So when it comes to this slide film, I was actually purely at the mercy of how this film was stored. The eBay seller did say it was stored frozen for 20 years. Now this film is a bit odd because it's not actually a 1600 ISO film. It's actually a 400 ISO slide film that was designed to be pushed two stops. So it's kind of pretending to be 1600 ISO. Kind of like if you've got three kobolds in a trench coat trying to sneak into a tavern, but we can topple that tower very easily with a quick DC5 investigation check. This idea of designing a film to be pushed like this has been used in lots of other films like Kodak's own T-Max P3200, which is actually an 800 speed film in the trench coat. Fuji got in on the action with their Provia 1600 film, and Ilford has its own Delta 3200 as well. Looking at this, there must be a point where making an emulsion with ultra high sensitivities is just really difficult, and it ends up being easier to just push a slower film in development, so they opted to take that route instead. More than likely to the annoyance of many film labs, but I developed my own E6, so I don't have to deal with annoyed lab techs when you walk in there with a film to be pushed two stops. Shooting this film was a lot of fun. Being able to shoot slides at night, handheld, is pretty awesome. It's a shame that the images look like coloured sandpapered ass, because being 30 years expired with an aggressive two-stop push and processing just absolutely cooked this thing into a grainy, colour-shifted mess. Looking at the images, the shadows are just gone. Which makes a lot of sense because when you push film, it tends to clip the shadows off a lot earlier, and the fact that the loss of sensitivity due to the age of this film would amplify that effect a lot. The highlights aren't any better though, they're just a complete mess and the mid-tones and, and pretty much every other tone. Also the grain in this film was so pronounced that you can clearly see it with the naked eye. Normally you can only see the film grain with a loop on a light table, but with this stuff I was able to see it while I was hanging it up. It was very clearly a grainy mess. You could almost say that it was a grainy day. Also, the images had a pretty heavy blue cast, which I tried to correct in Lightroom, but let's be honest, there's only so much you can do when your images actually look like this. Maybe if I had have exposed and processed the film at 400, it would have fared a lot better, but I'm not buying a film like this to shoot it normally, particularly when Kodak has this sweet ad that came out in 1985 showing how it stopped the world's fastest train. Now, this ad is actually pretty cool, and I would have loved to have recreated this shot for the video, but there are a few issues. One, I'm not in France. Two, I can't get to France. And three, turns out that the film is ass. But maybe, just maybe, if all the stars align, 
I might be able to create a somewhat similar shot towards the end of the year. Now, when I bought this film, I knew it was going to be a mess. Of course it was. It's a 400 ISO slide film that's designed to be pushed and it's 30 years expired and it was probably stored badly as well. So I was expecting nothing. If I only had got one image on the roll, I would have been happy, but all the images did come out to something that kind of, sort of, maybe looks like a picture if you squint like really hard. There are images on the film. And the fact I got something at all is honestly kind of amazing. And honestly, I'm kind of a little annoyed because I found this film to be really quite useful. Having a 400 speed slide film that can be pushed will be just an awesome thing for the film community. But Kodak has said in a podcast that they are looking at bringing back a film or two this year in 2021. So maybe, just maybe, we might, if we're lucky, get a 400 speed version of Ektachrome. And maybe it can handle being pushed a stop or two. Kodak, I'm waiting.